Um, can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, yeah, so this is a, a demo environment uh, that I've set up in Imply, and um, it, it includes, you know, actually very similar to, to Palo, you know, Palo set up. It's got PM accounting for um, for NetFlow, streaming telemetry, and Syslog. And Syslog actually goes through Syslog NG, uh, but streaming telemetry and uh, and NetFlow go through PM accounting. And then um, we've brought in other data with BGP through PM accounting too, which is a, a really cool uh, use case for service providers for sure. But what I'm showing here is um, I'm in the data tab in the imply pivot product. It really it starts to demonstrate the power right of of the back end. So uh, what we what we usually find is a customer will actually bring the solution in for a specific use case, let's say network data, but it's so flexible. You can put you know clickstream data, ad tech data. You know we we deal with financial with financial transactions. I mean it's really like any event type data is is a, a perfect fit for the solution, and it can also be batch. So I could take something off of S3, I could take something off of HDFS, um, or it can be Kafka Kinesis. So real-time data coming into the solution, you'll notice as I scroll through all my data sources, like, you know, my NetFlow BGP, that's real-time streaming NetFlow data with BGP augmentation. I also have uh, Syslog uh, in, in here as well. And then once you have your data sources, right, once you're ingesting the data into Druid, you can start to build your visualization. So in this case, you know, I've, I've built a quick um, uh, dashboard around some of the interesting things I care about. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out too is that PM accounting can also do geo, uh, uh, geo mapping. So I've, I've used like the most basic uh, library that you can, you can pull in, which is just based on country. But when you start to bring in like lat long and create geo hashes, this could be more specific. Um, so you can definitely have geo data in here. Um, thanks to Apollo, it's, it's really easy to do. Um, and then what I'm showing at the top part of my dashboard here is my NetFlow data. And, and NetFlow, as, as you know on the call, is more detailed packet data um, on the packets actually passing through your network device, whether it be a switch, a router, a firewall, et cetera. Um, some very basic views, you know, looking at bits per second. Maybe I want to dive into something more specific, right? One thing that NetFlow doesn't give you is like a name, right? What is this application name or, um, or what is this host name? What is this username? And Imply and Drew would give you a, a great way to map that data using something called a lookup. So here I can map, whether it be protocol and port, I can map IPs, whatever I want to an external table to start to give myself more visibility, right? Because looking at a, an IP or looking at a protocol and port, you may not know right away, like what is that? So it really cuts down mean time to repair. When you're troubleshooting problems, you want to know right away, who is this? What is this? Um, how can I fix the problem as soon as possible, right? Um, you can even do things like concatenate data. So let's say your raw data has everything broken out and you've got your protocol, you've got your port, you've got your IP addresses. I might want to include all of those together and create another dimension in our product that includes each of these pieces. And when you're looking at network data, a lot of times top flows are what matter because it's going to be, you know, five, even six pieces of information that can go together. And that's what we see in this top top piece is concatenated data, uh, giving you visibility into your top flows. And then there's something interesting here, Apollo. I'm just looking at my setup here, and I see a big chunk of charging in here. So if you care about DDoS, you know, you'll notice that these dashboards are extremely flexible. I could just choose charging, and you'll notice my entire dashboard updated uh, within seconds, right? And that's really what Imply and Druid are all about. It's one of the biggest pieces. It's not only getting the data in fast, making it available to query in real time, but then the query speeds are millisecond, second. Pivot's really uncovering that. Um, if you, if you, you can use JDBC with Druid, you can use Tableau and Looker and, and other solutions, but Pivot was designed specifically on top of Druid to give you the, the real-time responsiveness that, that really matters. And when I selected this, okay, you, you've caught me. I'm actually launching a DDoS attack 
against myself on my home router. And that's why you see these two private IP addresses. So I'll probably stop doing that, but I found it interesting to send some, some charging data at one of my cameras outside my house and, and see what would happen. So as I scroll down here, um, you know, just getting into the flexibility, right? Um, not only have I brought in NetFlow data into the solution, but just, you know, very uh, quick setup, I can bring in log data. So I've got my syslog coming in. So that can sit right next to my flow data, it can sit right next to my streaming telemetry. So not only do you see a dip in the traffic, but maybe I see a log entry, right? That That's actually telling me what happened. Maybe someone, some user did a shut, no shut on an interface, or maybe I had an optical level drop that then caused packet loss, right? All of this can be grabbed from my log data. It can be grabbed from streaming telemetry or potentially SNMP if you have that coming in too. Um, you know, you want bandwidth planning within Pivot, you can even do things like comparisons. So if I want to compare what my current interface uh, traffic levels are to a week ago or a month ago so that you can start to understand how do I need to scale out, right? Do I need to add more interfaces to my link ag bundle? Um, are there certain service providers? So another thing you can do is once again, getting into the BGP aspect, I can bring in my BGP routing table correlated with flow. So now I can understand, for instance, the entire AS path that you're seeing here, I can understand, okay, my traffic's leaving here. This is how I'm reaching this customer. This is how I'm interacting with this other service provider. You know, BGP really starts to, to make that clearer for you. And then when I look to the right, you know, once again, using that great lookup function, I can map an AS number, which may not be clear to an operations person, and map it to like an AS name. So I know, okay, most of my traffic, it's leaving, you know, these interfaces on this router and they're ending up at Google, for instance. And it, this data can provide a lot of different things. It can be part of a DDoS strategy. It can be part of a, um, you know, you, you want to get better peering costs. You know, you can use BGP for a lot of different things. Maybe it's just understanding, hey, why do I suddenly see this much latency, right? Oh, look, my AS path changed to reach this customer. I've added three additional hops um, through the internet. And that's why latency has now increased and the customer's calling in. So it gives you a quick visualization of you know, how traffic is either entering your network or, uh, or passing through. And then what we can also do is you know, dig into the data. So this is kind of what Paula was, was touching on is if I wanna understand something, I see a spike, you know, I see this little spike here, I can just say, you know, go explain what the spike is. And this is a unique feature in Pivot. Um, it really gets you from a five click or a six click approach down to a one click approach to understand what is the data in the spike. And you'll see on the right, when I selected my star, I suddenly have clear visibility into what are my devices? I'm doing that lookup, so I know the names. It's not just an IP address. I've got my top flows. I've got my my interfaces. My I've got my my applications. Right. So you really get a clear view of what a spike would be uh, on my network. Um, or you can do things like just drag and drop. So for instance, let's just look at you know let's look at top talkers. This is one of the most uh, commonly used. Uh, visualizations that a network engineer would go into. Who are my who are my users using the network based on IP address, right? So just, I drag them in quick. I've got a top talkers list. I'm looking at BPS, but what I also want to do is look at something like packets per second. So I can have multi-selection on the, the metrics. I can create my own metrics. I can create my own dimensions. You know, very flexible interface. You've got a number of different visualization types in here as well. So you're not stuck with just a table view. And I could I could keep expanding on this, right? So for instance, hey, let's look at top source host names. Let's look at, you know, top destination host names and just keep adding dimensions to once again, drill down to what's important. Or maybe I just want to go up here and say, uh, let's see, I'm going to look at IP source. I'm just going to choose this guy because I, I want to understand uh, what he's been doing, right? And so I can I can filter it down in the IP address. I can use a portion of an IP address using something like contains to then search for for the matches that I need. 
So very powerful tool. We also include alerting. Uh, I'm going to jump into uh, the alerting piece. Um, you can set up a number of different alerts, right, on, on pretty much anything you want. So if you want a DDoS detection strategy, um, we can identify, I'll just go into one of these, you can identify the, the, the higher increase in traffic based on the static threshold or deviation percentage uh, over time. Um, and this can relate to, you know, a lot of different things, bandwidth. Uh, bandwidth planning. If it goes above, you know, 70% or 60%, I want a notification for as far as utilization goes. It can go to, uh, you know, DDoS. I've got traffic coming from China. This is how much it is. It's UDP port zero. Um, I'm going to analyze this quick in a data cube. Or you can even have a webhook sent. So a lot of people can take that webhook and even uh, take the solution to integrate with like mitigation platforms or, or black hole routing, right? Depending on how you're you're handling your mitigation strategy, and that's that's pretty much what I wanted to show. I know we're way over time, but um, just a quick demo of of what we can do here.